is so real it's like a documentary it's so it's kind of surprising every once in a while that you're you're actually wa watching an actor it's 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 the true thing it's the real thing it's and i've known so many people who have had Piet PTSD. My dad served 34 years. My mom served. Um, people very, very close to me, uh, members of the actors' studio, other actors with whom I've worked, and who, who just to to get out of bed in the morning uh, is a heroic act. And um, it's so for me, this film was really true. It didn't have any bling to it. it. Wasn't trying to be. Let's see how we can make money. It was just let me tell this real story. And they did, beautifully. Yeah, he was locked in, right? Jason Lopez, like you said, and let's talk about what you said during the um, uh, Q&A at the end. He was right in. He was locked in from the beginning. Yeah, I think he had uh, ghosts with him, explosions with him. He had Iraq with him. He had people that he'd shot with him. He had his... He kept looking for his friend. His friend, Bobby, whoever Bobby was, was real. Every... every Everything he was haunted by and that kept him being driven was so alive for him and so specific and so clear. I saw this man disintegrate before my very eyes and then try to cling to something to believe in at the same time. It was really remarkable. Elizabeth says that something is good, is good. Um, your work was so in and you were so locked in every single moment, like you never dropped that ball, like you were absolutely taken. I'm wondering about your process when you went home, right after the shoot, after the rehearsal, after it. the work, really. I stayed it. <sighs> oh, it's a piece. <laughs> this is a very powerful story. Let's talk a little bit about your process as an actor. How do you prepare yourself to this? I was sleeping under my bed with heavy metal and and I wanted to make myself uncomfortable and creating and exploring so many different ways just to see what it would be like to to live in horror and and uh, and because I couldn't imagine what these guys went through so I figured I had to go to the most darkest places that we're all scared of or we hide and don't even know exists within ourselves so I played and uh, I went uh, to those places. In the sense of edge right from the beginning there is a sense of edge. Working it on stage and and uh, just until the world was there and reading more about PTSD, surfing through the whole internet, researching, researching, and then interviewing veterans and not letting them know that I, what I was doing, but just basically just connecting with them as a human being. I see it, Elizabeth, when I see, when I saw this film, it's like your mind can really literally kill you. <coughs> Honestly, Elizabeth, how can we give so much power to what we think? Why do we give so much power to what's going on up here? How do we silence this fire, this mess? Well, I think there are a lot of practices that people uh, seek out, such as Jason was saying about finding the 10 day silence retreat. Um, there's there, there, there are ways in which everyone can work with, like Gabrielle Roth has this beautiful movement, uh, Five Rhythms. She's been dead since 2012, but she says, put your brain and your mind and your feet and move. And it's a really beautiful practice that opens your heart and your soul. I'm, I mean, I'm not saying that's the answer. I'm saying there are many ways in which we can heal as we grow into whoever we are. And, uh, um, but, you know, a friend of mine who uh, is very close to me, who has PTSD, who couldn't be here tonight, but when we were walking down the street after he, he, he stepped on something and he went <gasps> like this and, and then he just went into one of those phone booths that are now vacant because we don't really use pay, pay phones anymore and collapsed and started to sob. And he said he thought he just stepped on a, a skull, a head, because when he was in Iraq, you would think you were in a pumpkin patch and your foot would be going down into something that was like a squash and you'd look down and realize it was the head, <laughs> you know. 
of one of the men in your... And even uh, the shoe, when he was like using the shoe as a... As, as a gun, right. As a gun. That, I, I, I mean, I don't know if that was a spontaneous thing. Yeah, he said that it was him. I, I asked him. He said that was his own thing. It felt like that. And, and um, uh, e e even the thing you see where outside the window on the facade of the building, it looked like faded hearts just dripping. <laughs> it takes a lot. It takes a lot of list of it. A lot. It's hard, it's hard work to look at art. What needs to be brought into the light? But that's what people with PTSD are dealing with. And actually, each one of us who is a human being, that's what we're dealing with. We're, 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 there's a duality there. So, but, but if you're talking about the Joker, the Heath Ledger kind of working on the shadow and how deep and dark and all of that, I know for a fact that. He loved working on that part, and he was never happier working on that part. Whatever was going on in, in terms of his psyche and the, the other the substances and things like that that, that, if, that, that cause a death, that's, that's another thing. That's another story. That's another thing. Yeah. But to work on the shadow side, there's great alchemy, and, and Jason is in the light now. As you can see, he is shining. He is radiant. Yeah, he looks so gorgeous too in the six pack. I noticed that. Forget it. I'm a, I'm a have a husband. I know, but I can't help it. He was in great shape. Right? You you counted them. I did. I 